I'm a computer scientist. I specialize in medical image analysis and uh, large-scale analysis of, of biomedical data. So we take uh, images, usually from CT or MRI scans that you get as a patient in the hospital, and we try to mine those scans for additional information and use that to derive predictive treatment algorithms for patients that are undergoing cancer care. I graduated from the School of Computing almost a decade ago. Uh, and after that, I went down to the United States, worked at Vanderbilt University as a postdoc, and then I transferred to a position at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, which is uh, the oldest and largest and probably best cancer center in the world. And I was the only PhD that specialized in image analysis at that institution. And Memorial Sloan Kettering produces a tremendous amount of imaging data and so I worked through that data for a few years and really worked with clinicians and demonstrated that there was value in that data. And when I found out that Queens is the repository for the cancer clinical trial data for all of Canada and much of the biomedical data for Canada, I realized that that was a unique opportunity that we simply don't have in the United States. The United States uh, does not centralize any kind of access to um, any kind of access to patient data. So I mean, it's a country that can't agree that they should have access to universal health care, right? Never mind have uh, interoperable uh, patient data for you know transfer to different institutions. So I came back to the School of Computing. I was recruited into the School of Computing and into the Department of Biomedical and Molecular Sciences to take advantage of the data that we're collecting here and to use that and exploit that for potential cancer clinical trials. I'm interested in biomedical data. So some of that data is from imaging data, so those CT or MRI scans that that we take of patients when they come in for their care. Sometimes that data is genomic, proteomic, metabolomic. But what I'm really interested in is how we put that data together. So how we put that data together, interrogate that data to make new biomarkers. So a biomarker is a thing that a clinician uses to make a decision. So do we send this patient for chemotherapy? Do we send this patient for surgery? Do we send them for uh, uh, radiation therapy? Um, and right now, we don't really have a good way to do any of that. We treat everyone to treat a few. So if you're a cancer patient, for example, you come to the hospital, we'll probably give you one line of chemotherapy, and then when that fails, we'll give you another one, and then when that fails, we'll give you another one. And then we might do a genomic test to figure out if there's a targeted therapy that we should do for you. And so, um, so I take all of these different types of data and use machine learning to put them together into predictive and prognostic markers. Currently, there are no AI and machine learning systems in use clinically. So there are no AI or machine learning systems that are used to treat an individual patient. That all of the work that's done in AI and machine learning has failed to be clinically translated. And so in the next 10 years, I would like to see clinically relevant, biologically relevant biomarkers uh, that marry the idea of genomics, uh, of radiomics or, or radiology images, and putting these data together to, uh, to identify a, a unified cogent story of cancer that can be mechanistically targeted through some through some treatment that we derive. What if we can actually, using AI and machine learning tools, come up with a better strategy and a better ordering of those treatments? And that's something that I would like to see. My research has changed over time in a few ways. One is that as a graduate student at Queen's, it was much easier to do clinical work that could potentially influence the patient care. And I thought that was something that you could do anywhere because you could do it at Queen's. And so then I went down to the US and I realized that there are so many barriers to that work and to really doing clinical work and you know passing things through the FDA and, and making clinically usable biomarkers uh, that it brought me back to Canada. And so now that the equation has changed. So coming back to Canada, you can really 
rethink how you create these markers and the data with which you have uh, to do that. Uh, but the other way that it's really changed, so I've had an independent lab for four years now. So when I started the lab, we spent a lot of time annotating data and collecting data because data isn't just available through the clinical system. You have to extract it from the system, you have to label it. And as a result of that labeling, we now sit on a mountain of data that will be really interesting to use AI and machine learning tools to inter interrogate. Um, and so while we spent a lot of time doing that initially, I think now is a really exciting time to be in the lab because we can now mine that data for clinically interesting uh, biomarkers. And so it, it just represents a, a, a really unique time to join the lab and a really exciting time in AI research. So now we can really benefit from uh, all this work that's been happening for the last few years and do some cool stuff. That's a great question. I haven't had grad students for a while because I've been at a cancer center, so we didn't have a, a university to draw graduate students from. But what I've done since I've come to Queens to uh, pick graduate students is that, you know, you always look for diversity, diversity of thought, diversity of background, uh, to bring a group of people together that think differently about problems. You know, we're an interdisciplinary group. We work with radiologists, pathologists, surgeons, oncologists, computer scientists, biostatisticians. So any background related to anything can really be usable in our group. We're interested in enthusiasm. You know, we want people that are interested in curing cancer. We're not here necessarily to write another paper, although we're gonna do that too. We're here to really move the bar on cancer care. We're here, we have a mission, and we are fulfilling that mission. And we fulfill that by doing these projects, but these projects and these theses are a microcosm of the whole system. You know, we're here to generate new ideas and to really look at cancer in a different way. Uh, students can have a variety of backgrounds. You know, some of the people that we work with are medical students or medical residents or fellows, but we also work with people that are computational students. We work with people that are from a basic science background that might have some basic science question that they want to ask of data that they might use computing to interrogate that solution. Um, and we want all of those different types of people. And there's no way really, no one way to really pick those people. You know, I was someone that was a good student, but I wasn't a stellar student, you know. And, but because of my ability to talk to all kinds of different people, that's my skill set. And so I recognize versions of that in other people. Some people, you know, want to work by themselves and, and work through a problem, and, and we love those people too. And then there's other people that don't work that way. And it really is just really about building a team that has a common mission. Computing is flexibility. So you can get any job once you're a computer scientist. You can go into any field. You can go into business. You can go into medicine. You can go into computing. You can go anywhere. There is a place for a computer scientist in every discipline. And computing means that you can make your own path and that you're always employable. So even when the going gets tough in your job, and every job is a grind at some point, even the best jobs are a grind at some point. And when you're in the grind and you're questioning your life choices, computing gives you the freedom to say, I don't want to be in this grind anymore. I can always go and take a job as a programmer in X field or reinvent myself as something else. And I think about that in my career. I think about this is the thing that I'm doing right now that I want to do for the next while, but I don't have to do it because I'm a computer scientist. I can go do whatever I want to do. And that's why you go into computer science. What I like about computing is that you can go into a room where you don't know anything about what's going on in that room. So I can go into a room that's full of clinical people that understand deeply their discipline and they speak a completely different language. And I can listen to what they're doing and I can think about ways that computing can help them solve a problem that they either didn't even know that they could solve or a problem that they didn't even know that they had. 
And that's what's so exciting about computing is that you can bring things together that maybe no one has ever thought about before. Computing is great and I spend a lot of time in my head in computing. So whenever I can, I try to get out of my head. I try to get outside, I try to do a lot of physical activity, go to the gym, throw sandbags at the ground to let out some steam because you know things it's important to handle stress and to deal with your life and it's important for you to be a productive member to take care of yourself. And we sit in desks all day, so it's important to undo sitting in a desk all day.